Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Remember, you are greatness inside of you. Welcome back to another Ab Daily News with your hockey coach, Guru Code Frenchy. Today, episode number 270. What do you have a minute coach today? First of all, let's talk about Jaden Straubel. Secondly, let's talk about Denis Kurianov. Early review. And finally, a quick abs news because this week is going to be really tough for the Montreal Canadian. But before we start, we invite you, please don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the Hockey Nation Live Show, and leave me a comment about this episode. And last diving, talking about my first subject of the day. My first subject of the day, guys, is Jaden Straubel decision. What? Unfortunately for him, guys, uh, he lost uh, this weekend. Again, the Providence and overtime, and this season is over for Jaden. This complete his career in NCAA. We know he's going to graduate with the Northeastern. And now is the time for him to take some kind of decision to see what it will be his future as a hockey player professional. He was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens in 2019, 46 overall pick, a teammate with Jordan Harris. This season in 31 game, he has only one goal, 11 assists, 12 points. He's a six foot, 194 pounds. He played on the left defense, but he could play on the both side. First of all, here's some options for him in front of him. First, he could get an entry level contract of two years, join the Montreal Canadian at any time. Why two years? Why not three years? But first of all, if you have 22 years old before September 15, is this a rule in NHL? You cannot get a three years country level contract, only two years. Secondly, obviously with him, if he signed an entry level contract with a Montreal Canadian, and because this contract is after the trade deadline, he could not join the Laval market after the Montreal Canadian season is over. This is another an agreement CBA between the NHL PA and the NHL team. Now, his other option, guy, it could be a delay his entry level contract with the Montreal Canadian, get professional try out with the Laval Rocket, and he could complete the season with the Rockets as the defenseman. Like you said, it will help the Laval Rocket because he can play on the both sides on the defensive zone. Now, if he does this, what's happening for him? But it's opening opportunity for him. A open door. What do you mean? But because you have a professional trial, or you have no rights from the Montreal Canadian at that moment, he still become a UFA after that. So that would open more door if every other team would like to sign him at some point if the Montreal does not have an agreement with him. Finally, his last option is honestly refuse to come to the term with the Montreal Canadian and the agreement CBA again for that role for any player with the NCA complete or graduate in NCA, you have to wait until August 15 of that year to become after that a UFA and he can offer his service to any team in NHL. But coach, what he's going to do? My taking about this guys, I expect uh, sign a contract with the Montreal Canadian. I'm not sure it's going to be a PTO or it's going to be with a Montreal Canadian, but at some point he's going to stay in the organization with a Montreal Canadian. Then finally, remember, Ken Hughes, he was an agent before he moved as a general manager with Montreal Canadian. So they have a really strong relationship between Hughes and the Strobel family. Exactly what happened with Jordan Harris. So I expect Jaden Strobel sign or stay with a Montreal Canadian organization for the year season 2023 and 2024. I would like to hear from you. What do you think? Do you think he's going to stay with the Montreal or not? Or sign with the Montreal? And let's move on now, guys, for my next subject of the day. My next subject, guys, about the early review of Denis Kurianov. Uh, first of all, in seven game already, he has two goals, one assist, three points. It took him 43 games with the Dallas Star guys, uh, to score two goals this season. I know it's only seven games, but we can give a little bit more what happening so far with him. He got a great opportunity at the beginning, playing on the first line with Zuzki and Mike Hoffman. It did not work well. What do you mean, coach? Underlying number tell me he has right now 40% and less of 40% for a shot and scoring chance when he played with Zuzki and Hoffman. At that moment, Martin Sinwi reevaluate everything and he decided to bring him on the 
third line, he have a better number when he has some kind of chemistry with Pitlick and TNE. His underlying number, guys, are excellent. Over 50% of the shooting on the net, he have over 65% of scoring chance when he played on the third line. By the way, he scored an amazing great goal last game against the New Jersey Devils. What a quick release he did uh, over the glove of Schmidt when he got that great pass of Tyler Pitlick. He lead the team on the shot per 60 and he lead the team on the rebound per 60. Already for the Montreal Canadiens. Here, the graphic I want to share with you. They are the top five on the shooting on the net. Money at number five, Anderson, Caulfield, Gallagher, and now Kurinov is at 11.2. This is excellent if you think about his performance for the Montreal Canadiens. But remember, when they talk about Kurinov when you play with Dallas, his inconsistency is sometimes it disappear. Here, what I want to mention about him after seven games. He looked like Josh Anderson in many ways. Take off the physicality of the game. He's a north-south player. He have a great speed, but he's over skating with a puck sometimes. And because he have no vision, he's really not realized what is all the option, what he could pass the puck. He struggled too on the defensive zone coverage, man to man. It's something you need to improve to get a better way to become a better hockey player in NHL. Six more games to go. Is it enough? To Montreal Canadiens think they could sign him or not? I'm not sure. He need to learn the hockey sense. He need to have developed a better vision. They did it with Josh Anderson. They really work hard with Anderson. And now Anderson have a really good success right now with the Montreal Canadiens. Already with 19 goals. I believe Kurenov could become that kind of Josh Anderson with time. The time will tell exactly what he can do with Kurenov. Right now, the Montreal Canadian guy does not have rough skill scorer like Kurenov. Plus, his size is really good. He's over 6'3. He have a really quick release. Other than fact, Caulfield, I don't see any other the players winger can score like Kurianov, the potential of Kurianov guy is there. The key is to know if Montreal have enough time to teach him to become better before the end of the season to guarantee that Montreal Canadian can offer him a contract. Montreal could offer him a contract below at what he has right now, 2.9, for maybe a $2 million per year for two years contract. I still believe Kurenov should stay with the Montreal Canadiens, but he's still too early. Will time will tell exactly what's happening for the next 16 games. But I would like to hear from you guys. What do you think about Denis Kurenov? Do you feel he should sign or not with the Montreal Canadiens? This concludes, guys, my second subject. And let's move on for my last subject of the day. My last subject of the day, guys, is about Montreal Canadiens. A tough week. OMG, guys, this is not looking good. What are you talking about, coach? But first of all, they play tonight again the Colorado Avalanche. Tomorrow night, they travel to Pittsburgh. Then Thursday, they are going to play against the Florida Panthers. And finally, Saturday, they play against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And then they play again the Tampa Bay Lightning next week. So again, a really difficult schedule for the Montreal Canadiens. They lost the last six games. And the last six games, guys, the differential... Is only minus seven. Unbelievable. They lost 3 2, 3 2, 4 3, 4 3, 4 3, and 3 1. The last six games for the Montreal Ghanaian. But here, what I want to mention to you the Arizona won yesterday, and I got one point. With that, the Montreal Ghanaian now are 28 and the standing in NHL, five at the bottom in NHL. As the Montreal Ghanaian fans, many of you. Would love to Montreal pick at the top five for the next NHL draft 2023. Anaheim is only four points behind the Montreal Canadian. Can possible they reach the Montreal? We see they have a really easy schedule this week. They play Vancouver and the Chicago. Possible Anaheim pick up a couple more points, be very close with the Montreal Canadian. Then the only problem I can see is the Flowers because they are only one point ahead of Montreal Canadian. This is something we have to watch. Uh, we know Flowers right now, they're not looking good. And their schedule is not easy to. So it'll be really interesting what's happening. And that's conclude, guys, all my subject of the day. But I would like to hear from you guys. What do you think about Montreal? Do you really believe Montreal could have a chance to finish 29, 28, or 27? Let me know about this. And this conclude, guys, all the subject I have on this episode. Wow. 
This is a really good start of the Monday of the week. Uh, I'm talking about the Montreal Canadian. Today, we talk about Jaden's trouble decision. Denis Kurianov, early review. And finally, the Montreal Canadian have a really difficult week uh, in front of them. Uh, but before we leave, we invite you, please don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the Akinishu Live Show, and leave me a comment about this episode. And of course, you have greatness inside of you, and we wish you an amazing, great blessing day. And of course, an amazing and blessing week, everybody. Mm -hmm.